Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Timberlake. I am not Justin Timberlake. Sorry, sadly. Uh, I am David Pennington, and yes, tonight I will be talking about uh, those three things. Uh, how many of you guys out here tonight are writers of some kind? Copywriters, <laughs> bloggers, something like that. Here's my question. Why is it that certain pieces of writing can go from generation to generation, and most of us can't remember what we wrote about on our blog last month? I think it has to do with booze. Booze, words, words, booze, very scientific equation up here. For example, F. Scott Fitzgerald, in the 20s, he was drinking up to a fifth of gin a day. He writes The Great Gatsby. And The Great Gatsby is pretty much uh, how to drive a car after drinking mint juleps all afternoon. <laughs> a little while later, we got Hemingway, drinking a lot of rum. Writes The Sun Also Rises, which I know none of you have read, but it's basically uh, how to cure impotence by drinking a lot of red wine <laughs> and spending the evening with a hooker. Or two. Uh, all right, so this guy drank a lot, lots of drugs. He wrote a little thing about his Vegas vacation, but whatever. What this guy really did is he took a lot of drugs, and then he wrote about Nixon in a way that people actually wanted to read it. What have you done? <laughs> then things start to take a turn. Brett Easton Ellis writes Less Than Zero, writes American Psycho. Not much of a drinker, does a lot of cocaine. Gets high off a sense of entitlement, writes Imperial Bedrooms as a nice fuck you to all his fans. Then things get weird with this guy, Tucker Max. Lives off a diet of Mickey's and Jaeger. Right? Writes this blog, Tucker tries butt sex, hilarity does not ensue. They give him a book, which they make into a movie, which he's writing another book. And there's a theme here. Some people don't drink at all. <laughs> to fully understand this, we gotta go way back to Nordic mythology. This guy Odin, right, he hears about this thing called the Mead of Poetry somewhere in his seven kingdoms. It's said that if you drink this Mead of Poetry, you become a prolific storyteller and a great philosopher. Humans can't have this. He goes to find it. He finds it in a cave which is guarded by a woman. He disguises himself as a human, sleeps with the woman for three nights, because he's a whore. <laughs> then that woman says, thanks for those three nights. You can have three sips of this Mead. So he takes three sips, drinks all of it, holds it in his mouth, turns into an eagle, right, drunk, flies home. On his way home, some of it falls out of his mouth. The stuff that makes it all the way home stays the meat of poetry. The stuff that falls out becomes the rhymester's share. It's said that if you drink the rhymester's share, you become a poet of a lesser kind, which is like a major Nordic burn. <laughs> Think of it like the meat of poetry is like a fine wine, which you and, and appreciate over many, many decades. You allow it to grow. And the rhymester share is a shot that your friends dare you to do, and then you can't be held responsible for anything else for the rest of the night. <laughs> so how can we relate this? Well, a writer's job is to stand at the fringe of society and look inwards. And assuming you haven't jumped, all you have to do is sit at a typewriter and then observe, critique, and satirize. Hemingway got some words, nothing to do, with, uh, there's nothing really to writing, you just sit at a typewriter and bleed. We all know that the more you drink, your blood thins, you bleed more, you create a better story. <laughs> also, what are you doing at a typewriter? <laughs> when you're writing, it's best to ignore your audience, because your audience doesn't know shit. Your readers, however, will appreciate what you do, and they will provide the good feedback. Your audience reads Tucker Max. <laughs> and if you really can't come up with a good blog post, Make shit up. It's okay. Oprah retired. She's not going to call you out on it. <laughs> Blending a little bit of fiction into your writing can go do wonders. And lastly, write drunk, edit sober. Actually, drink something. Have a shot, have a glass of wine, do the rhymes to share, whatever, because it will make you the good kind of asshole that makes for good writing. However, edit sober. Because I don't know if you ever used WordPress after five beers. It looks like fucking Predator. But if you must drink and blog at the same time, I highly advise you use Tumblr. Because whatever you write will fit quite nicely between something naked and gifts of kittens and some girl that wants you to watch her webcam show. 
I fucking love Tumblr. It's great. Everybody should use it. I love Lastly, if you want to uh, read something by somebody who drinks a lot, uh, buy my book. Comes out next month. <laughs> Shameless plug. Songs about whiskey. Find it online. Facebook.com. Songs about whiskey. I'm David Pennington. Find me online. Yes! <laughs>